little bit of chicken fry. Cold beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit just right. And the radio. Get five bonus wings for $1 with any handcrafted burger. Only at Applebee's. In risk, the world is your battlefield. You are the general, leading armies across borders, conquering everything in your path to take over not just a country, but the entire world. Risk, the game of global domination. Oh, stop stalling. Come on. I can't think. It's all this noise. Or is it because I've built a stronghold around Greenland? I've driven you out of Western Europe? And I've left you teetering on the brink of complete annihilation. I'm not beaten yet. I still have armies in the Ukraine. <laughs> the Ukraine. You know what the Ukraine is? It's a sitting duck. A road apple, Newman. The Ukraine is weak. It's feeble. I think it's time to put the herd on the Ukraine. I come from Ukraine. You're not say Ukraine weak. Yeah, well, we're playing a game here, pal. Ukraine is game to you. How about I take your little bonus? I'm Joe Fryer. And I'm Savannah Sellers. We begin with breaking news, of course, as war unfolds in Ukraine this morning. Explosions and sirens heard in and around Kyiv overnight. Ukraine's defense ministry saying Russian forces have arrived in the capital and they are calling on residents to make Molotov cocktails and prepare to fight. U.S. officials say Russia has launched more than 160 missiles since strikes began Wednesday night, targeting major Ukrainian cities from three sides of the country. The newspapers talk about the corridors of power, the, the power elite. Let's just say we'd like you to join the club. Yeah. There's a vacancy in our newsreel department. We'd like you to help plan the news for 1973. Come again? Plan the news for 1973. What are you doing? I just want to make sure the sunlight's real. I always tell people... News is the most highly developed form of fiction. The most difficult. Come on. I, I just want to show you something. There's no obligation to buy. Really? News requires imagination. News requires responsibility. We think you're well qualified. Please. Tell us what's happening right now. Guys, Greg. right now, artillery rounds. Guys, right now, we are moving back from the front. The Ukrainian unit that we were with started to take incoming artillery rounds from Russian backed separatists here in the eastern part of the country. So you can see some of the other journalists and soldiers who are with us on the front lines here. And you can hear that explosion there. Let's, let's move a little quicker. And please, if you're safe, do you need to put on your, you need to put on your headgear or you're good? Yeah. City of Kiev saw over the past 24 Trey, hours Trey, go ahead and could put your continue helmet on. today. But just do what you got to do. Seriously. Ukraine, yeah. Kiev. Uh, a white say. And there's my, my apologies for these uh, putting on a gas mask. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-three. We've only roughed out the news for nineteen seventy-three. Nothing's been given the go-ahead yet, but this uh, this is the kind of thing we have in mind. September the 5th, 1973, the new phase in global warfare. War by example. At 4.32 our time, China took out the remote Indian border village of Bandor, unprotected by the Icarus network. After the first two five megaton H-bombs have fallen, the nine-way hotline finally... Switch it off. Set. But... This is... 
going to happen in 1973. You're going to make this happen? No. We are going to make models much cheaper. Then we photograph the models. Fake newsreels? Yes, fake newsreels. For the past ten years, people have been looking at our fake newsreels and listening to our fake commentaries. And they accept it for the truth? And you can do it. Stop a hundred people in the street. How many of them have actually seen a missile or a satellite? That they're, they're, they're just told they exist and they believe it. Yes, you're getting there. I knew you would. Well, now the moon rocket and, and the satellite, that you can get away with. That's too remote for people to grasp. It's too far away. But, uh, but this... I mean, you invented this village on the Indo-Chinese border. Oh, yes. Well, somebody could check up. Very mountainous territory up there. There'll be no survivors in 1973. No rescue work. Radiation scare. Yes. You can do it. This could be the news for 1973. I'm very weary of what we are shown. I'm very weary of what we are told. You know, if there is anything that we hopefully have learned, and this is a big piece for me lately, that's really hard for humans to grasp, okay? We're in an evolution, which means that our consciousness is evolving, which means that we are deprogramming ourselves, okay? We are taking ourselves out of deep programming and mind control. And one of the things that we were shown these last two years is how narratives control us, how deep, deep, powerful, fear-based narratives control us, and how a lot of things are smoke and mirrors. So they look one way, and they're shown to us one way, but there is something much deeper going on behind the scenes that we don't see. When we are given new narratives, i.e., what's occurring with Russia and the Ukraine, we're going to immediately forget what we awakened out of two years ago, one year ago, six months ago, right now, which is that everything is a narrative. There is a reason for everything. There are many countries that are experiencing worse things than the Ukraine, but we're not being told about them. Okay, that's not to say that what is occurring in the Ukraine is not horrific. What I am saying is that we are only given what they want us to see. We are only told what they want us to be told. Everything is designed to control and manipulate us. Everything. So when I hear about Ukraine, I always go to there's something deeper behind the scenes happening. I do not ever believe what is being shown to me. And I always know that if it's being shown to me, it's because they want to control some sort of narrative. Tell me, what is the news item that's bothered you the most in the past year, 1967? Oh, well, it, um, well, it has to be the new American intercontinental ballistic missile, the, the, the boy wonder, doesn't it? Just the one I asked him to set up for you. The new ICBM, codename Boy Wonder, with a much talked about Mercury warhead. Um, I haven't any special effects up here, but perhaps with, with the proper sound. Blast on. And Robert Larkin, television director, high IQ, 35 years old, is scared. Scared by nothing, it doesn't work, it's a scientific impossibility. The same goes for the much talked about Mercury warhead. <laughs> First picks. Well, if, if this rocket doesn't work, then the others? Then... They have a fireworks party at Cape Kennedy almost every other day. Well, you didn't really believe there were all these things whizzing about up there, did you? Uh, Sputniks and rockets. <laughs> Astronauts crossing their legs for eight days. How long has this been going on? Since Hiroshima. And, and the H-bomb, you mean, that doesn't work either? Right. Dirty. Very, very dirty. What was your first reaction? Relief. Oh, yes. Yes, it has to be relief. 
so more news in regards to the ukraine russia thing that is going on i mean i don't know over the last two years i keep having to say the word actor a lot and here we go again here we see sean penn you remember him from last year turned up on the tv said that the jab should be mandated and the unjabbed were evil people or something like that i did a video on it there's a lot of dodgy stories about sean penn but let's just focus on this now here we see in the news today we see sean penn on the ground in ukraine filming documentary about russia's invasion it says here sean penn is on the ground in ukraine filming a documentary about russia's invasion vice studios confirmed the oscar-winning actor appeared at a press briefing thursday in the ukraine capital of kiev listening to government officials speak about the crisis the documentary is a vice studios production in association with vice world news and endeavor content well that was that was very quick they organized that very fast isn't it strange don't you think it's a little bit strange at a time when the u.s authorities are telling u.s citizens in the ukraine to leave all u.s citizens leave now it's dangerous but at the same time they're sending in a u.s hollywood actor and a film crew to film a documentary about it i wonder why do they not think people are going to believe what's going on and they need the backup of a documentary later on so they're sending a hollywood actor to the ukraine which of course the ukrainian president has spent most of his life as an actor as well vladimir zelensky of course spent 2015 to 2019 playing the part of the ukrainian president in the tv series servant of the people for four seasons what is it with all these actors it was a transition between acting as a president for four years to becoming the real president it's quite a coincidence yes that's all a coincidence big coincidence that's a big coincidence a coincidence no that's a big coincidence that's what the coincidence is there are no small coincidences and big coincidences no there are degrees of coincidences no there are only coincidences ask anyone other big coincidences and small coincidences are just coincidences well well i'm in show business yes why come to me you know why why it's show business mm -hmm. that's why we're here v for victory Five Marines raising the flag, Mount Suribachi. One video of one bomb, Mr. Moss. The American people bought that war. Mm -hmm. War is show business. You want me to produce your war? Not a war, it's a pageant. We need a theme, a song, some visuals. Okay, good. Put the, put the, the village behind her. Give me some flames. Some sound of screaming. She look Albanian? It looks like she was born and raised in Albania. Mm -hmm. Could she be running across a bridge? I think uh, a pawn. I think it's a calico kitten. You're running across with a kitten. Boy, punch in a calico kitten. I have 19 screens here. I can't see one calico kitten. We have a we have a small calico kitten, sir. Calico. What? The president wants a white one. He wants a white one. How soon do you think we'll be able to get this cut? Oh, we're going to be done in about four or five hours. And this just in, a Newsbreak special report that the young Albanian national fleeing in this video is attempting to escape terrorist reprisals in her village. America has seldom witnessed a more poignant picture of the human race than that which armed... Fantastic. Only 12 people are allowed beyond this point. Most of them uh, work in the photographic department, taking the phony newsreel pictures of our models and processing film and so on. Sit down, please. Ah, pretty pictures from our stills department. The boy wonder. Do you really think that missiles and satellites are my line of country? No, not at all. I've only shown you the hard news. There are other things. When did it all start? 1945. You may remember the Americans let off their two atomic bombs. Well, 
They didn't want other people doing the same thing. I mean, you do see that, don't you? Oh, I don't know. You scare the people off. The Americans put it up, and the atomic bomb was halfway along the line to something much bigger, the, the hydrogen bomb. It didn't work. They spent five years in negative research. Well, what about the Russians? They're supposed to have quite a pile of these things. We were surprised when they started their tests. Then we got a few feelers from their secret service. Nowadays, we work very closely together. Oh, all these stories about spies going off to Russia. Uh, Mr. Philby, remember? Just good copy for the Sunday papers. Good copy. Well, the Chinese. I mean, they've just announced their bomb. Yeah, we played along with it. We recorded their phony explosion. We're rather hoping the Chinese will come along, um, complete the pattern, you know. In Vietnam, hundreds of people are being killed every week. Well, you can't do that with your models. No. And you can't kill people of bad habits in two generations. They like to carry rifles. They like to put lines on maps. And we let them because we control the situation. There's no danger of world war. Just a simple choice for everybody. Capitalism or communism. Strawberry or vanilla. It all adds up to the same thing now we've got rid of the big bangers. Well, how can you be sure that Johnson and Kosygin aren't working on other things? Poison gases, bacteria. Pathetic man of your intelligence. You don't want to destroy the world, neither do I. What makes you think that presidents are different? Well, they've made some pretty good stabs at it in the past. There wasn't the right sort of control then. Nowadays we know better. Politicians are easy to control. The grosser mentality boys who like to be photographed getting in and out of Daimler's in Whitehall. They come right at the bottom of our organization. A few rungs up the ladder, there are the people in the top secret factories. Just those in a position to know they're making weapons that don't really work. But there must come a time when somebody wants to use one of those weapons. I mean, somebody is standing there with a finger on the button. Well, that's the beauty of it. Nobody presses the button. We control all the crises. We build them up and we shut them down. We? Again? Yeah, I'm coming to that. Near the top of the hierarchy, there are the economists, top civil servants, top brass in the military, those men who are supposed to view the nuclear tests and so on. And above them, CWNS. Right at the top. Classified World News Service. Just who the hell are you? It's obvious, isn't it? Just a few, just a very few of the top people in communications in every major country in the world. We are now very eager to hear from you how you see the future of Ukraine. Welcome very much, Mr. President. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here the first time. Um, I'm the president of Ukraine, so I'll speak Ukrainian. The World Economic Forum welcomes the young global leaders. This year we selected 245 young global leaders from 65 countries with representation in every region uh, of the world. The collaboration, the innovation, and the entrepreneurship that you see active in the community really is, I think, making a mark on society. It's a wonderful community of innovators and uh, people who have a great devotion to change the world to be a better place for humanity. A group so diverse of uh, young people in leadership positions sharing a commitment to build a better society can really make a forceful and powerful uh, agent of change. I truly believe that um, we can inspire each other to really, really shape this global agenda. They're not challenges, they're also opportunities if we, if we use them right. The World Economic Forum welcomes the Young Global Leaders. When you brought the Young Global Leaders program here for executive education and the Schwab Fellows, but there are two countries in the world now in which the Young Global Leaders have emerged. Tell us just a bit about that in terms of the governance? Yes, um, actually this um, notion to integrate young leaders uh, <coughs> is part of the World Economic Forum since many years. And I have to say um, 
when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin, and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina, and so on, is that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau, and I would know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet, are for our actually young global leaders of the world. I had a constituent that wanted me to ask a question about outside interference to our democracy. Klaus Schwab is the head of the World Economic Forum, and he bragged how his subversive WWF World Economic Forum has quoted infiltrated governments around the world. He said that his organization had penetrated more than half of Canada's cabinet. And I was wondering, in the interest of transparency, could the member please name which cabinet ministers are on board with the WEF's agenda? My concern is the deputy. Uh, order, order, order. I, I know he was. I know the, uh, the member was in a, a really good, good question there, but the 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 audio is really, really bad, and the video is really, really bad as well. Um, and I and I and I apologize. I don't know if if the member. Okay, uh, let's let's uh, let's try again. The honourable the, the the honourable member for Timmins James Bay. Mr. Speaker, that member was promoting open disinformation that's not debate we have to call out this information uh, we'll get into debate again so yesterday i was at a, rece at a reception for prime minister trudeau and i would know that half of this cabinet or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet are for our actually young global leaders of the world and that's true in argentina too wow yeah, sorry. That's true in Argentina as well. It's true in Argentina and uh, it's true in France now. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the president, with a young global leader. But what is important for me is those young global leaders have an opportunity to come here. And we, in addition to the young global leaders, we have now the global shapers in uh, 450 cities around the world. <laughs>